Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. I know the participants of this conference are from all over the world. It is unfortunate that I cannot present my talk in the live session and have a chance to interact with the participants, but I shall let you know that as you are having this meeting, I will be in the air flying to London, and that is the reason I couldn't be with you. In this talk, I'm going to share our findings an analysis comparing two chemistry courses, one taught online and the other one in person, which will be referred to as face-to-face -face in this presentation. Okay, let's move to background. Recent studies, especially after the COVID, show that there is an increasing interest in online courses. Most universities have increased their online offerings. Despite this trend, Many professors still believe that face-to-face -face education is superior to online education in providing students quality instruction. Strictly speaking, face-to-face -face education is considered traditional, for which no portion of the course is available online, and only a classroom management system is used to provide extra resources, such as posting lecture notes or syllabi. On the other hand, in online courses, more than 80% instruction is provided online and that's how we are going to differentiate our courses in the study in an early study on the effectiveness of online education Piccoli et al found no significant differences in students performance between face-to-face -face and online instruction the study took place in a computer science course for business majors which use a virtual learning environment for daily instruction held all course exams in person. While no differences between students' performances were detected, students in the online sections of the course evaluated themselves as more able to use computers than did their face-to-face -face peers. This, however, came at the expense of satisfaction, as online students reported lower satisfaction in the course. In a teacher education course, traditional and online sections were compared and no significant difference in student performance was found between them. And the study was completed by Schuyler et al. And student satisfaction was likewise shown to be roughly equal. And this was a little different from the Piccoli studies. However, in a Thai business statistics course, students in the online course were observed to perform significantly better than students in an equivalent face-to-face -face course. The authors concede that there may have been significant contribution from teaching style difference between the traditional and online courses that accounted for the observed difference. It was determined that online learning environment was less instructor center in nature than face-to-face -face courses, which allows students to pursue a more independent level of learning. Furthermore, online systems foster a constructivist approach by allowing students to move at their own pace and develop their own ideas. Another study was conducted in a master's level teacher education course. West et al. found that students in this course were more successful since they focused on the process of learning rather than the content. In addition, a large review of online course effectiveness studies found no significant differences in most comparisons of online and face-to-face -face instruction. Overall, this suggested that neither method of instruction offers a clear advantage in learning. Despite the available literature on the effectiveness of online education, studies of physical science courses are very few and far between. The case actually is even worse in chemistry. One large reason for the lack of online chemistry courses is a lack of desire to eschew the in-person laboratory experiment. Although very few online chemistry courses are offered, there is no literature measuring their efficacy. So this makes the study extra important. In order to classify how students are learning, a coherent system must be used. Amongst the most popular methods of classifying learning, we have multiple intelligences and Bloom's taxonomy. 
In this study, we chose to use Bloom's taxonomy, which is used to classify the level of thought processing involved with learning activities and test questions in six levels. Higher level questions are generally considered to be better indicators of how well students have learned the course material. Now let's look at these six levels. Bloom et al. defined taxonomy in 1956. There are six levels again. At the very level, lowest level, we have acquisition of knowledge. At the highest level, they put evaluation. On the other hand, Anderson revised this taxonomy in 1999, and they put the creation at the top. So creating knowledge, creating projects, creating a thesis maybe, consider highest level of thinking. And we are going to look at, in this study, first three levels due to some limitations with the questions. We will examine remembering understanding, applying. We'll see how students are functioning, performing differently in these areas. Now we're going to learn about the details of the participant and the study design. This study was performed in an introductory chemistry course for non-science majors in a medium-sized public university in northern New York State. No laboratory instruction was included in our comparison, in our analysis. The study consisted of one face-to-face -face class and two smaller online classes. The face-to-face -face section of the study was a single class offered in a full semester that contained 148 students. The online sections contained 157 students. Of those students, 78 took the class during a full semester and 79 took the class during a summer session. Both the online and face-to-face -face courses had three midterm exams and a final exam to assess student learning. In total, the three midterm exams from each course were used for the analysis for this study. All of the exams were multiple choice. Each was 80 minutes long. In face-to-face -face instruction, a traditional teaching method, lecturing was mainly used. On the other hand, in online instruction, students were provided the same videos asynchronously, so they watched the lecture videos on their own time. There was no meetings at all. All three researchers coded the exams using Bloom's taxonomy to analyze the differences between the students' performances in each class. The two sets of coding with the highest inter-rater agreement according to Cohen's couple, were adapted. And so we were very pleased with the results. In the final analysis, no Bloom classification was chosen to be higher than apply, as I mentioned earlier. So that's the third of six levels, as multiple choice problems, we think, were not sufficient to be able to assess students' abilities beyond, beyond this level of thinking. To analyze students' success on individual problems, the number of students from a particular class who answer a given exam question correct was expressed as a fraction between 0 and 1. This resulted in an essentially continuous variable for each of the exam problems, which allowed the use of most common statistical tests. For example, the mean success of the face-to-face -face students on all exam problems was cal calculated and compared with the mean success of the online students in the fall and the summer in ANOVA to determine if there was any significant difference in performance. SPSS was used to run the statistical test, and the tests that we run for analyzing correlation are Pearson correlation coefficients, students t-test, and analysis of variance, ANOVA. OK, let's talk about our findings. First. We wanted to find out if there were differences in our three courses, fall face-to-face, -face, fall online, and summer online courses. A series of analysis of variance tests were run to determine if there were any significant differences in student performance between the face-to-face -face class and the online classes. There was a difference significant at the 99.9% .9 confidence level between the three courses. 
Then we did some post hoc analysis and they showed us that students in the online summer course were significantly more successful than either the face-to-face -face students or the fall online students. And this suggests that there may be some advantage to the shorter course, also suggests that there's no disadvantage to online courses over face-to-face. -face. Okay, then we wanted to determine if course offerings in summer and fall make any difference on students' performance. A t-test was run to determine if there was any significant difference between student performance in fall and summer online courses. Results of the test show a significant difference between the two courses. And on average, that's what we found, students in the summer online course answer questions correctly on 73% of the questions, 68% for the fall online students. And this actually was an interesting finding because people think that if something is online, that should be resulting the same results, but we found otherwise. To better understand the differences between the courses, they were compared by grouping the questions by Bloom's taxonomy categories. Three ANOAs were run, one for each level, remember, understand, apply. Let's look at them now. Here, the first level. It appeared that differences at the remembering level was significant among the courses. The post hoc analysis provided very interesting results. The online students answered these low level questions better than the face to face students. This may be because the method of instruction for online courses, which was primarily student driven, which helped students memorize more facts. It could also be that the type of students more likely to enroll in an online course is a type better at memorization. And we also think that recalling the advantage seen for the summer online courses, it is suspected that shorter time needed to remember facts in a six week course may have given those students an apparent advantage over students, either online or face to face who had to remember the same facts for a longer period of time. All right, then we analyze the differences at the understanding level. This is the second level in Bloom's taxonomy. A comparison of the means for the question at the second level of Bloom taxonomy, the, we, we determined that the F value and significant was weaker than that of remember, the first level of Bloom's taxonomy. Post hoc test found that face-to-face -face students and online summer students were significantly different from each other, with online summer students performing better than the face-to-face -face students. However, the online fall students were not significantly different from either the face-to-face -face students or the online summer students. The comparison, as you see on the figure three. All right, now we are looking at the third level of Bloom's taxonomy. It was determined that once students move beyond memorization and interpreting knowledge into application of that knowledge, the difference between the three classes disappear. The memorization effect that may have assisted in the first and second levels of Bloom's taxonomy appears to have faded as students had to apply their knowledge to new problems. And this is usually done in the form of calculations in a chemistry course. And a significant difference favoring the face-to-face -face class is not, however, observed in our study. We do not have any evidence to claim that face-to-face -face instruction is superior as believed by many professors. All right, let's wrap up the presentation with our conclusions. Overall, there were very few significant differences between online courses and face-to-face -face courses. Face-to-face -face students answer a fever of the memorization and remembering first level of Bloom's taxonomy questions correctly than did online students. Again, most likely this is either because online instruction pro promotes better memorization or because students good at memorization uh, and this is gravitated towards online courses. As understanding is generally being able to recognize the knowledge 
you have learned in a new context or larger frameworks, memorization still plays a role in differentiating students, though not as large as it's not playing a large role in this equation. However, once again, this, as we mentioned earlier, these differences disappear as they move to the questions requiring a higher level of cognitive activities. And so we can easily argue that at the introductory level, online courses can be utilized without hesitation when needed, like at pandemic times. Even we do not want to experience that again, it is an option universities can consider at this level. Before I finalize this presentation, I will also like to inform participants about a special issue I and my colleagues, Charlie Cox from Duke University, Ingo Alks from University of Bremen, editing. And this is going to be published at Education Sciences Journal, and we are going to focus on the importance of making chemistry relevant and meaningful. Chemistry has been seen as an abstract, isolated subject by many students, so it is important that we make it relevant to our students at different levels. By doing this, we are hoping to increase their motivation and interest in learning chemistry and seeking a degree in STEM fields. So please submit your papers by the deadline. We will be happy to assist you with your manuscripts. And the journal agreed to waive the publication fee for this time. So this is a great opportunity. I hope to get many papers from the audience. And finally, I'd like to thank you for your attention. And please feel free to contact me with your questions regarding the study or regarding the special issue. Enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you all have a great conference and experience. Bye.